Hey, good afternoon, uh, my Stop Doing Nothing fans, fans, friends, friends, fans, kind of whatever you want to call them, followers, whatever it is. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the fan terms, friends, watchers, followers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, hey, it's Patrick Allman. It's 2 o'clock Central, August 24th, and it's been a while since I've done a live stream, and there was a topic uh, that I was thinking about when I was at the gym a couple of days ago. It was a couple of days ago? Yeah, it was a couple of days ago. Uh, that motivates me to go there. I wanted to talk to you about it, and I would like some feedback in the bottom as I'm chatting about this to see if this happens, uh, you know, if this happens to you also. For those of you that are gym people, some of you I know are not gym people. It takes a certain kind of mindset to want to voluntarily step into basically a torture chamber to pay to step into your own personal torture chamber every single week and choose to abuse your body, whether it's aerobically, uh, a sport, uh, lifting weights, CrossFit, whatever it is. But there's something I've noticed from uh, uh, some of the people that I know that are really into exercising. And uh, to me, it happens a little bit. It's one of the reasons I go back, but it's that gym high. And first of all, I want to talk about, and I want to talk to those of you who are looking for something to, to bring into your life uh, that you want to do legally and relatively free uh, to get that kind of that, that adrenaline rush in your head. First of all, I believe there's things, a non-technical, non-medical term called gym high. And to me, what gym high is, is when you, you, once you walk through that door, that's when the adrenaline and probably the endorphins kick in and, and, and you're, you are a lot more motivated once you get through there. Um, as you all know, it takes motivation to even get into the gym. That's the hard part. It's that, it's that getting off of the couch. It's the changing of the clothes. It's it's the do you have the right clothes? It's sitting in the car. It's sticking the key in the ignition. It's that whole process of of getting there. Do I have the right shoes? Do I have the right shorts? All that, and and that's really hard. That from the couch, the front door of gym, in my opinion, is the really hard part. But once you pull open the door, the the double glass doors in your gym, because that's what most gyms have, where they slide open for you. Once you get past that door, things change. And that's when, uh, what I believe I call the gym high, that's when the gym high kicks in. And that is when the motivation is kind of perpetual and it brings itself on. And that's how it works for me. That's one of the things I have to remember is, is if, if there are times where I don't feel like going to the gym, all I have to do is get to that point where, where I can make it to the front door of the gym. So my goal, at least three to four days a week, is to get to the front door of the gym, and then everything else takes over. Then from that point forward, I see other people exercising, and they motivate me. I see people of various sizes, of various shapes, of various ages, and they motivate me. Just being in that environment is motivating. You can't help, in my opinion, you can't help not being happy and inspired and somewhat you know, fascinated by the by the self improvement process. Once you get inside the door of the gym, for those of you that are somewhat addicted to self improvement, like I am, that's all a gym is. It's pretty cool. A gym is just an environment of people that want to improve themselves. Whether it's young kids playing pool at the YMCA where I go, or people playing ping pong doing some amazing things, or or full blown CrossFitters and bodybuilders just you know working their butts off. To feel better, the gym is one giant, one of the few places in the world that you can go to that you, everybody there is committed to self-improvement. And I'm serious. I mean, I, I go to a relatively big YMCA and there's basketball players and there's people swimming and there's people lifting weights and there's aerobic and there's ping pong and there's spin class and there's kung fu classes. I mean, everyone there is there to get better. And there are not too many places in life where you can go to like that, where everybody in the building from the moment they walk in to the moment they leave, is committed to the ultimate in self-improvement, to improving themselves physically, obviously, but there's a lot of psychological and mental work that goes on inside the gym also. And that's what gets me high. Um, I don't do drugs. I have a drink on occasion. But but when I step inside the gym and I have that feeling, it's like, okay, now I'm here. Now I have to work. That kind of perpetually motivates me, and I feel pretty darn good after that. Now, this is a really important message for those of you I mean, for those of you that go to the gym, you know what this feeling is. You've, you've experienced it, and you may not even know, knew that it was coming, but you're like, yeah, I feel pretty darn good when I get in the gym. <clears throat> this message is also for those of you who are contemplating going to the gym. And I'm not going to beat on you on the physical benefits of going to the gym. That's, 
that's an obvious one. You should, you know, you should know that. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is if you are someone who is low energy and you're looking for a reason to get more high energy. Uh, you may take in caffeine, you may take in nicotine, you may take in meth, you may take in cocaine. There are various drugs you can take to get from a low energy state to a high energy state. But one of the things I've noticed about people that are hardcore exercises is they can get that same kind of high from going to the gym. So if you're in a point in time in your life where you, you know, you're doing some things that aren't necessarily the best for you, Try to find a way to make yourself start going to the gym. And I'm talking something simple once a week. And use it to replace that artificial thing that you were using to get high. Because we all know that the caffeine and nicotine and, and crack and marijuana, all those things, they're temporary. They give you a temporary chemical um, uh, motivation, if you will, or stimulation in your brain. I don't know the exact terms for it, uh, but that at some point in time, that ends and you come down off that high and you have to do it again to get that high. And in some cases, for some, you know, internally taken drugs or things that you snort or inject, you know that you actually have to up the dosages. You know, it's, it's for, for people that eventually end up with hardcore drug addictions, they started off, um, you know, on the very low and it may have been something, you know, Oh, you know, I like the, the nicotine I get hit, I get from cigarettes. Let's go up that to marijuana. Let's go up from that to this. Let's go from, and eventually they're they're at the top level drugs and they can barely function without being high. I mean, that's the that's the downside of drugs. And I know drugs give you a very good feeling, but you have to keep upping the dosage, which gets more expensive physically and monetarily um, over time, but, but exercising is not like that. You can get some of those same endorphin rushes and those same caffeine rushes by, by lifting weights or by getting on a treadmill. I mean, it's amazing how the body will serve you the motivating drugs you need and put you in the mental state where you don't need an artificial substance. You can, your body can generate the same things you need. Now, obviously it's not the exact same feeling and I'm not saying anywhere near that, that running on a treadmill, is the exact same thing as taking a hit of cocaine or, you know, some more injecting meth or, or whatever it is or freebasing. But what I'm telling you is drugs is artificial ways to stimulate your brain is uh, expensive and it's short term and you will have long term damages for it. We all know that you're, you're all adults. Um, but if you can find a way to generate that naturally inside of your body, you will, number one, obviously be healthier, but it will be cheaper in your pocketbook and you, you will not have any lasting long-term effects. So if you're, if you're someone who's in a bad place um, emotionally or physically or, or drug-wise and you want to replace that, do me a favor. Walk over to the closest gym you can. Say you want a trial membership. Almost every gym has a trial membership for a couple of days or a week and commit to going to that gym and finding something simple you can do every single day. And I swear, there are times when I go to the gym just for 20 minutes. You don't have to, you don't have to um, do multiple hour workouts. I've been the kind of guy, I've done two hour workouts. You give me two hours in a gym, I'm gonna find a way to use two hours in a gym. But but sometimes I go and I set my timer, so I'm gonna watch right here, I'll set my timer on my watch for 20 minutes and I will go to Stairmaster and I will work my ass off for 20 minutes and I walk out. And then the people are like, hey, you barely worked out. I'm like, you know what, I got my heart rate up. Uh, I'm mentally in a good state. I'm psychologically in a state. I feel great. You know, I can conquer the world now. I just needed that hit. Daddy just needed that hit, uh, 20 minutes on the treadmill to feel better. And like tonight, for example, tonight I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do 20 minutes on the treadmill, and then I'm going to lift weights. And when I walk out of there, I'm going to be exhausted, but damn, I'm going to feel good. And I don't need uh, a vodka and cranberry to do it. I don't need a hit of marijuana to do it. I can get that from the gym. So like I said, if you're in a bad place, consider going getting a trial membership at the gym and slowly replacing something naturally that comes from your body and that's generated by your brain and by your by your organs and replacing an artificial uh, stimulant with that. And hey, Mike uh, Boatman, man, I appreciate you tuning in. I, I, I saw your comment there. Thank you very much. Um, so that, that was my tip for today is, is work on getting that gym high and if you're the kind of person that has lived off that gym high before, I'd love to hear your comments below. And also what I really love to hear from are people where you have been in a bad place before or a bad state 
and you eventually replaced it with that. If you've gone through the journey I've talked about in this video where you were just, you know, maybe severely depressed, got out of a bad relationship, uh, were just down on the dumps, may have been hitting the drugs pretty hard, the artificial substances pretty hard, and you were able to replace that uh, with something gym or gym related. You know, I've seen people, there's no shortage of transformation stories in the world. I mean, how many overweight to fit transformation pictures are there on the internet? We see them. We see them all the time from CrossFit gyms. We see them all the time from mindset coaches. We see them all the time from the personal coaches. There's no shortage. So I know there are people out there who have gone through this. So if you've done that before, I would love to hear your comments below. And as always, your attention is very important to me and I value it. You have the choice to watch and do lots of things on the internet and you chose to pay attention to me for a few minutes. So I really do appreciate the fact that you did that. Get to the gym. And this has been Patrick Allman with Stop Doing Nothing. Until the next live video, take care and I'll see you at the rack or on the Stairmaster. Bye for now.